and boils 30 acres, and the crowd was unbelievable. 80,000 seats and $1.8 million at the gate, that was unheard of in 1921. This was the first radio broadcast of a world title fight, and that shows how much interest people had in this fight. The who's who was there. It's the first time boxing actually became a social event. And the appeal of the fight was the two great champions meeting each other. We had the light heavyweight champion against the heavyweight champion, and they were two very, very popular athletes. It just took Dempsey four rounds to dispose of the Frenchman, the first of many million dollar gates in boxing. Jack Dempsey was involved with five million dollar gates. The second one with Louis Furpo of Argentina. The third one with Gene Tunney, the American. Jack Sharkey the fourth and Gene Tunney with the rematch, the fifth. He retired with approximately ten million dollars, tax free. Jack Dempsey, unbelievable. I guess I had too much to win for tonight and I tried to knock him out. Otherwise, I don't want easy. After the first Lewis and Khan match, the public demanded a rematch. Believing that Billy Khan successfully changed his style, he would be the heavyweight champion of the world in the rematch. But Joe Lewis had different plans in mind. Right up, cut left hook. Boom, boom. Oh, man. That man was great. Unbelievable. This is 1910, Reno, Nevada. Jack Johnson defends his heavyweight championship of the world successfully against the former champion brawler maker Jim Jeffries in his 15th round knockout. The reason why Jeffrey and Johnson were such a big extravaganza was because of the fact that Jim Jeffries was a great white hope. And the fight grossed $270,000. And remember folks, this is 1910, where that kind of money was unheard of. And here we are in 1982. Same situation, the great white hope, Jerry Cooney, challenged the heavyweight champion of the world, Larry Holmes, and the whole world watched this fight, just like Johnson and Jeffrey. The outcome was the great champion defend his title with a 13th round knockout. Sugar Ray Robinson, gaining the middleweight championship of the world from Randy Turpin of England, and a 10th round spectacular knockout. I had a little misfortune getting my eye cut. When I saw that blood, well... <laughs> 61000 paid $767,000, and that was in 1951. This was the biggest middleweight championship fight until the great Hagler in the fight. Larry Holmes versus Muhammad Ali for the WBC Heavyweight Championship of the World. Ali trying to accomplish being the only heavyweight ever to win the heavyweight championship four times in a row. But it was a sad comeback because Muhammad Ali couldn't answer the bell for the 11th round and Larry Holmes successfully defended his title. In the early days, the fighters made their money from film rights, while today it's television. Who's the next million dollar gig gonna be? Mike Tyson, see you again at ringside. Sports travels to the far side of the world, to the uncommon beauty and the proud heritage of Japan. Today, the land of the rising sun offers its scrutiny to a sport of timeless realities, world championship boxing. The Japanese people have adopted a new sports hero. Brooklyn-born boxing ring grad Mike Tyson hovers over his new audience like Mount Fuji. His month-long stay in Japan has been a three-ring media circus as the Japanese wanted to see this giant of a visitor up close. But even Kabuki theater requires a dramatic foil. So Tony Tubbs has likewise journeyed around the world and though he is in no way capturing Japanese hearts like the champion, he is nevertheless in Tokyo with a purpose. <laughs> Too often, Tubbs' body has borrowed from his name. But if this is the trimmer version of the former WBA champion, Tony Tubbs could be a respectable challenger. So we bring you live now to one of the most vibrant and intriguing cities on the planet. Tokyo, Japan, a city whose people have maintained a jump on the future along with the customs of centuries past. A magnificent setting for a World Heavyweight Championship as Mike Tyson defends against Tony Tubbs.
in the middle of this vast city sits a five-day-old 65,000-seat dome stadium which the Japanese refer to as the Big A. And now we are live in Korakuen Stadium in Tokyo, Japan as HBO Sports presents World Championship Boxing. Undisputed heavyweight champion Mike Tyson defends his crown against former champion Tony Tubbs and about scheduled for 12 rounds. This first major international event in this new stadium follows in a series of appearances which have and will be made here by Western superstars. Both Madonna and Michael Jackson recently began world tours in Tokyo. Mick Jagger will be in here tomorrow night, today, and we should point out that it is noon Monday here. The Japanese spotlight falls on the heavyweight boxing champion of the world. Hello, I'm Jim Lampley, and I will be commenting on this boxing match along with HBO's two boxing experts, Ray Leonard and Larry Merchant. Ray, let's talk first about the growing stardom and celebrity of Mike Tyson. How do you see it affecting him at age 21? Well, Jim, I think it depends on the personalities. For me, I enjoy the adulations and the accolades from the fans and supporters. But when I perceive Mike Tyson, he's a guy that doesn't particularly care for the attention. It won't get to him because he's a young man, very determined young man, who is able to shut the world out because when he fights, he's always on a mission. Indeed, he told the press conference and us here a few days ago that wherever he fights is his home. He is here only to do a job. And Larry Merchant, precisely how difficult is Tony Tubbs likely to make that job for him? Jim, I'd like to say that he has a slim chance of winning, but that would be anatomically inaccurate. It's a fat chance that he might win. But let's keep in mind that the Japanese promoters handpicked him as the opponent because they felt of all the contenders out there that he had the best chance to extend the fight with the champion. And they don't want to be embarrassed as they were 15 years ago when George Foreman ended it in two minutes. Tony Tubbs indeed does have boxing skills. His problem is that at age 30, his attitude is much like it was at age 13 when he was wandering around the neighborhood in Cincinnati with gloves slung over his shoulder, challenging guys to fight him for five or ten dollars. They look at this pudgy kid and say, sure, and then he whipped their butt. But I don't think that that will work against Mike Tyson. What will probably work would be if Tubbs could manage to be very busy during the fight, but this has already been a very busy period of time for Mike Tyson, who got married on February 7th and then very shortly after that departed the United States and came here to Tokyo to fulfill a promise he made to the Japanese people back in 1986. When I become the heavyweight champ, I would love to come to Japan and defend my title. And I, I look forward very much to being there and meeting all the great people in Japan. Bye. And two years later, the journey has begun. Since George Foreman KO'd Joe Roman in 1973, has a World Heavyweight Championship fight taken place in Tokyo. Within two hours of the champion's arrival here, Tyson Mania was in full cry. So I really would like to thank you graciously to invite me to your country, and I look forward to giving you a good show. Immediately, the realization that the experiences of this fight would be like none other before it. In the days that followed, millions of Japanese seemed totally mesmerized by the American camp. It was as if Godzilla, the movie monster of the 1950s, had returned to Tokyo. Here the heavyweight champion's every move has been watched and followed. Even at 4 o'clock in the morning, photographers waited for the chase for one more picture opportunity. It's scary. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't mind being the champ of the world and getting the attention that I get in America, but, you know, this is a whole different dimension to once you leave your country 
and you're a bigger star in other countries than you are in, in your own country. I mean, that's kind of, it's frightening to me, it is, you know what I mean? Because I never, I didn't never wanted to be a super, superstar. I just wanted to be the champion of the world. In the beginning, most Japanese knew little about Mike Tyson. But as each day passed here, he became exactly the center of attention he claimed he didn't want to be. Mike Tyson, he is a symbol of the United States. Even the children found a way to get into the action. So on the first day tickets went on sale, 80% of them were sold. Whether an autograph, a photograph, or just a brief touch, everyone wanted a piece of the champion destroyer from the West. I don't feel bad. I feel like I left Earth and went to another planet. I never experienced anything like that before in my life. Around a bunch of people just floundered around me and were so excited to just be around me. It was an experience I don't know if I'll ever experience again. I feel everyone should know who the world champion is. And in my mind, before I ever traveled to another country to, to fight in a world championship contest, I thought, yeah, everyone should know the champion of the world. But God, man, I, I would have took second thoughts if I knew it would have been like this. And this was just the beginning. The new bride's arrival only added more fuel to what was already the hottest story in town. But the biggest story was the day Mike Tyson met one of Japan's greatest sumo wrestlers, Konishiki. Outweighed by 300 pounds, Tyson was hardly the heavyweight in this <laughs> ring. Nor could he imagine how he might become heavier from the sumo's customary meal. Now this, how can you get big off this? I eat stuff like this. I eat things like this when I'm on my diet. Yeah. In a matter of days, Mike Tyson captured the hearts of millions. As celebrity to some, as temporary inspiration to others, his journey had just begun. In every champion's reign, some part in his particular career, he goes through that stage when all, all attention in the world is focused on him. And I think this is my time. Here on this national holiday, Vernal Equinox Day in Tokyo, a large crowd is still arriving. They have paid up to $800 tops to see this World Heavyweight Championship fight between Mike Tyson and challenger Tony Tubbs. And we're bringing it to you live on HBO Sports. Now standing by with the newest and most special member of this heavyweight champion's relatively small entourage is Larry Merchant. I'm with Robin Givens, who was attending our first Mike Tyson fight as Mrs. Champion. <laughs> Robin, uh, inquiring minds want to know, how does a woman who went to Sarah Lawrence and Harvard Medical School wind up falling in love with a guy who's a graduate of the School of Hard Knocks? God, I want to know, too. There's something, we have a lot of, in common, uh, tradition, traditional families, and, and we just sort of love each other. We sort of love at first sight. It was hard in the beginning, but we got through it, and we ended up married. Conventional wisdom in boxing would be that marriage will somehow soften up the champion and make him vulnerable for a challenger. I've been hearing a lot about that. I'm getting blamed for everything. I don't know, Michael was talking the other day and he was saying a middle class person couldn't be a fighter. A person, a fighter has to have known struggle and enable him to have learned the art of boxing. Michael knows the art of boxing. Hopefully I'll give him some sort of peace of mind and that'll enable him to perfect this art. And I'll love him to death. I'll do the best I can. Thank you so much, Robin. And the odds makers say you will enjoy the fight. Just one historical social note. Heavyweight champions Jack Johnson, Jack Dempsey, Muhammad Ali, Joe Lewis, all married early and often, and it never hurt their careers. Now let's roll out the challenger, the man who wants to end this honeymoon. He does have more ice cream than fire in his belly, but he also really has the stomach for fighting. 
In America, a well-conditioned body is one of the most eagerly sought aesthetic ideals of the 1980s. Everywhere we look, we are reminded of it. Experts tell us how to lose weight, how to tone up, how to exercise, what to eat. Most of us suspect we're only a book away from looking marvelous. Sports television channels jump on the exercise bandwagon with numerous aerobics programs. Still, there are a few who contend that bigger is still better. What would Christmas be without a roly-poly Santa Claus? Even in sports, there are exceptions, like the sumo wrestlers of Japan, who haven't missed a meal in years. And that kid from the Windy City, the American sumo. What's his name again? But in professional boxing, it's generally seen as a fighter's responsibility to enter the ring in the best shape possible. Not being in shape has been a criticism that has haunted one Tony TNT Tubbs throughout his career. Back in 1985, Tubbs won the WBA heavyweight title with a decision over Greg Page. But for reasons which remain obscure, Tubbs neglected to take advantage of his golden opportunity, gaining 15 pounds while supposedly training for his first title defense against Tim Witherspoon. Tubbs claimed the weight gain was the product of injuries and problems with promoter Don King. Regardless of its origin, when Tubbs stepped into the ring that evening, many believe he cheated boxing fans and cheated himself as well. Basically, i never really been in top condition for any fight. 244 was overweight, but that occurred with injuries. My problem now is that I don't want to come in the ring because people want me to come in the ring at 220, you know, or 215. I got to come in the ring because I feel good about my weight and I feel good to what at 28, 30, I'm strong and I'm fast. Mike Tyson got to deal with that. Tony Tubbs concentrates more on his training now. He wants to avoid the mistake of again failing to realize just how much is at stake in this business. If fighters aren't motivated to get into shape by pride, the rest of us would like to believe they should be motivated by the chance to make millions. Seven years ago, when Tubbs turned professional, he weighed in at 212 pounds. But by his 15th fight, he was already up to 224. And four fights later, he tipped the scales at 239. One more win, four more pounds. Then for his next two fights, he got himself into the best shape of his career. Against Bone Crusher Smith, he weighed in at 228. And then against Page, 229, which he considers his best fighting weight. Then lightning struck again when he defended his title, he ballooned to 244 and lost the championship belt. But Tubbs received a second chance when Witherspoon was ruled to have run afoul of a drug test and a rematch was ordered. Controversy followed again when Tubbs, less than a week in advance of the fight, requested it be postponed due to a shoulder problem. The injury was confirmed by independent examination, though skepticism lingered. Now Tony Tubbs is back in training with a new purpose. Even before this bout with the gym began, he was working on shedding weight with the help of former bodybuilding champ Lou Ferrigno. And most recently, he's been given even more incentive by the alleged $50,000 bonus to come in under 235 pounds. I know physically I'm in shape. 230 is my weight. 229, 220 is a plus. But I'll be 230 and hard. Physically, you'll be seeing the new Tony Tubbs. When I step in the ring, everyone say, wow, look at that cat. You know, and the thing about it, once I start putting the moves down on Mike Tyson, I'm going to change. You know what? This fight might not be hard as y'all think it's going to be because Mike Tyson is, 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 is only good for what he can hit. For Tony Tubbs, a chance for redemption is near. But there are new stakes. If he fails to enter the ring with his mind and body 100% prepared for Mike Tyson, this time it could be hazardous to his health. I know right now that I am one of the best heavyweights in the world. I can box better than any of them, and I, I ain't taking no back seats to none of them. I'm not even taking the back seat to Mike Tyson. Through the perilous fight, or the ramparts we watched, were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled Banner yet wave O'er the land of the free 
and the home of the brave. And that, as almost all of you surely know, was the famous welterweight Andy Williams. Despite what Tony Tubbs told us about coming in at a hard 230, yesterday he made a liar of himself at the weigh-in at a rather blubbery 238. Not what the Japanese had in mind, Larry, when they agreed to Tubbs as the first opponent for what is being called the Tyson World Tour. That's right. And here's a man who has really begun it in modern times, Muhammad Ali. Uh, this event is a reminder that one of his many achievements was truly making the heavyweight championship a world championship. Between Jack Johnson and Ali, no American world heavyweight champion fought for the title overseas. So now Tyson begins the world tour in Tokyo, and in moments we expect the challenger, Tony Tubbs, will exit his dressing room and begin to make his way toward the ring. He weighed 228 and 229 in his title fights against Page and Witherspoon, 238 and a quarter yesterday. Very quickly now, Ray Leonard's inside tips on what each fighter must do to win the fight. It's no big secret, Jim, that uh, Tony Tubbs would definitely have to jab and move in order to keep Tyson off balance. I think weight becomes a factor here because it somewhat stabilizes him because the SS weight he becomes a stationary target. He mentioned to me yesterday that he's willing to exchange punches, which could be a big mistake. Hand speed, exceptionally quick hands for a heavyweight. And I think that could frustrate uh, Mike Tyson if he should do that. But he has a tendency to become stationary, and in doing so, we're talking problems. Here, Mike Tyson, a notorious body puncher, works his uh, opponent's body, slows him down, and he's starting to use his jab a lot more, which gets him inside, and he's able to deliver punches. He has a mistake that he needs to correct, and that's lunging in with punches. Because what happens, Jim, a lot of times a guy's able to counter his shots. But if Mike Tyson hurt you, no question about it, he's in there to finish you off. One man he would like to finish off today, Tony Tubbs. And there is Tony Tubbs standing behind his trainer, Odell Hadley. Hadley is the man to the left of your screen. Tubbs' management situation and his training situation has changed constantly from year to year and in recent months. And Ray Leonard, we must ask, what should we think of a man who does not have the responsibility to himself or to fight fans to enter the ring for a heavyweight championship fight in the best possible condition? Well, not just using the ring, in the ring against Mike Tyson doesn't make sense to me. You have to be in the best shape possible to compete or contend with Mike Tyson. And for some reason, I don't understand Tubbs' conditioning. Yeah, but the, the other side of it is that if Tony Tubbs came into the ring in shape, he, he'd be some other fighter. He wouldn't be uh, Tony Tubbs. He'd probably be a nervous wreck trying to get down to weight. That's just not who he is. As we look at the tail of the tape, you will see that Tubbs weighs 238 and a quarter and enjoys the reach and height advantages over Tyson that virtually every heavyweight who ever faces Mike Tyson will enjoy. Tyson weighed in at a relatively trim 216 and a quarter. He is always, almost always, Ray, in immaculate condition, and once again here, that appears to be the case. You can expect the first round. There is no such thing as still not process to Mike Tyson. He jumps right on his opponents and, and try to take their heart. We have to see whether or not that's going to happen today. And millions of boxing fans watching around the world, welcome to the fabulous stadium known as the Big A. And here is our punch stat profile of the fighters, how many punches they throw. They throw roughly the same amount of punches. The difference is that Tyson throws many more hard punches and lands a very high percentage of them. And the jabs, you see that Mike Tyson does throw a decent amount of jabs. Tubbs can throw a lot of jabs, although he has told us that you cannot hold Mike Tyson off with a jab. Don't look for too many of them in this fight, he says. Rules have been worked out between the WBA and the WBC for technical reasons, which we'll explain in a moment. The IBF is not involved in rules discussion here. The three knockdown rule has been waived for this fight. Scoring will be done by three judges on the 10-point must system. A fighter can be saved by the bell in the last round only. And now Tony Tubbs 
who now lives in Santa Monica, California, was raised in Cincinnati, Ohio, begins to enter the ring. Recently turned 30 years old, Tubbs has won 25 of 26 fights in an eight-year professional career. The only loss, the title loss decision against Tim Witherspoon when he weighed 244 pounds. He has twice been as far as 15 rounds. Anyways, 238 and a quarter today after claiming to us two days ago that he would step on the scales at 232. Well, he's talked to talk and now it's time to walk the walk. Incidentally, he's getting about one-tenth of the purse of Mike Tyson. He's getting $9 million. About a half million dollars will go to Tubbs after all of his expenses. I figure out that that's about uh, 100,000 quarts of ice cream <laughs> or a shrimp salad in Japan. <laughs> Tony TNT Tubbs, one-time WBA heavyweight champion of the world. And now a challenger, and the first challenger, for Mike Tyson on what is being billed as the Tyson World Tour. There is a syndrome evolving here in Japan, which is described by a new term in the Japanese language, it is called Gaitare. It refers to foreign celebrities who are brought here by the overwhelming economic power of the yen currency as opposed to other world currencies. Now joining Madonna, Michael Jackson, and Mick Jagger as Gaitare is Mike Tyson. And the interesting thing here is we were led to believe that the Japanese fans would view this more as a show. Uh, but, and that they don't, they sit on their hands a lot. But they are truly as excited as, as people led us to believe they were underneath their impassive masks. Of course, if you have seen Tyson before, you are aware of what is called the gladiator look. No robe, no towels, no socks, just the black trunks, the boots, and the 10 ounce Everlast gloves. Mike Tyson is 21 and a half years old unbeaten in 33 fights with 29 knockouts he went 12 rounds to a decision twice this is his sixth title defense as heavyweight champ the third defense as holder of the championship in the eyes of all three governing bodies because of a conflict between local promoters and the international boxing federation only the wba and wbc title belts are being billed in Japan in connection with the fight. But in reality and in the eyes of boxing fans, it is the unified title which is at stake. And right now, let's go up to our ring announcer, Michael Buffer, whom the Japanese promoters have flown over from Philadelphia in the United States. Michael Buffer will deliver the pre-fight introduction. This, of course, is the Japanese ring announcer who is providing initial instruction for Japanese fans here as to the principles in the ring. And now, Michael Buffer takes over the mic. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Konnichiwa! Good afternoon. This championship belt is a presentation of Taking Boxing Promotions, President Akiko Honda. It is sanctioned by the Japan Boxing Commission, Commissioner Makoto Hosaka, and the World Boxing Council, President Jose Suleiman. The World Boxing Association is represented by Championship Committee Chairman Dr. Elias M. Cordova, Jr., the ringside supervisor is Gabriel Peña Garicano. He's the WBC general counsel. The three judges are Larry Rosadilla of the United States, Masakutsu Uchida of Japan, and Ken Morita of Japan. And working for the 78th time in a world title bout is the referee Arthur Mercanti of the United States. And now, ladies and gentlemen, to all the millions and millions of boxing fans watching around the world, welcome to the Tokyo Dome, the Big A, right here in one of the greatest cities in the world, Tokyo, Japan. A 
I would like to introduce in, this, in the ring at this time a man known as one of the premier promoters in the world of boxing, Mr. Don King. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to rumble 12 rounds for the heavyweight championship of the world. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. He's wearing his boxing trunks and weighing 238 and one quarter pounds with a professional record of 24 victories, 15 by knockout, and only one defeat from Cincinnati, Ohio. He is the second ranked heavyweight in the world and a former heavyweight champion, ladies and gentlemen, the challenger, Tony TNT. Fighting out of the red corner, wearing the solid black trunks and weighing 216 and one quarter pounds from Catskill, New York, which is the hometown of the late great trainer of champions, Customato. He brings a professional record of 33 victories without a loss, 29 KOs, including 25 KOs in five rounds or less and 15 in the first round alone. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the undisputed, the undefeated, heavyweight champion of the world, Iron Mike Tyson! Mike and Tony, you both received instructions earlier in the day, and therefore you know the rules. I wish you both an off at all luck now. Return to your corners to await the starting bell. Good luck. That's Arthur McCanty doing his sixth heavyweight championship fight, his 78th world championship fight. Tubbs says he knows how to fight. The champion, everyone says it. It's a little bit more difficult to pull it off. Let's see if he really wants to rumble as he says he does. I see Mike Tyson iron the uh, belly, the bed section mm -hmm. of Tony Tubb, so look for him to jump right on in the first round. Okay, all set, all set, go. Mercanti says they're all set, and there's the bell for round one. Tubb throws the jab, and Tyson responds in time. Go, you're right, Dave. A lot of fighters find it difficult to uh, set Mike Tyson up because Mike now gives a lot of uh, head movement. All right, break! I say break, up, break! One of the big questions has been whether Tubbs would clinch and grab and simply try to survive with Tyson, as did Bone Crusher Smith and Mitch Green. For now, it does not look that way. Six, four! Well, Tubb stated that he would just exchange punches with uh, Tyson because the best way he felt to beat him was to be inside, throw short punches, combinations. And here he selected to do that. I don't necessarily agree with that, Jim, because what happens, Tyson, with his shorter arms and upper body strength, is able to uh, do a great deal of damage to the midsection of his opponent. Watch for the left hook by Mike Tyson. Tubbs trying to go downstairs to Tyson's body. You see the left jab of Mike Tyson. He's starting to use it more consistently now. He found, he found out that it gets a man into punching range. And you can begin to see the startling hand quickness that Tubbs brings. Startling partially because of the shape of his body. Well, here with Tubbs, the uppercut. I also know the uppercut of Mike Tyson. He's able to throw it, throw the same punch twice, and then over. Tyson missed with the left hook. Earlier, he had landed a wicked right to the killer kidney. Look for a looping right hand by Mike Tyson because that's the punch I see that uh, Tubbs is vulnerable to. He keeps dropping that left hand. One minute to go in round one. Tubbs landed a left and ducked away effectively. You know what to do, Sam. There you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. You know what to do, Sam. 
What Tubbs needs to be doing now, he needs to go two or three jabs to kind of break the rhythm of Mike. Because what's happening, Tyson's starting to set up. You need to break that rhythm with a jab. Tubbs throwing the uppercut. A lot of people think he will have to be effective with that punch because Tyson comes in constantly. Well, Tyson also lunged him with an overhand right there. And that's one of the mistakes he makes. Ten seconds to go in round one. I thought Tubbs fought a very effective round. I gave him the round, he landed some hooks, and he went to the body as promised. Remember he told us that nobody has gone to Mike Tyson's body so far. The voice is that of trainer Kevin Rooney. Come here, Mike. Come here, Mike. Oh, you got it? The talking in Tubbs' corner was done by trainer Odell Hadley. So now Hadley and Rooney have had their minute, and round two begins. Tubbs keeping that right hand up because of the left hook of Mike Tyson. But also, you notice now you see a much more relaxed Tony Tubbs. So now his punches are being right, more wait, fluid. Look at Tyson with the rapid fire three jabs in a row. Something new within the past year. Well, Tyson is starting to improve each time he steps into the ring. But what I see here in Tubbs, Tubbs is pretty much trying to get range so he can drop his right hand because in his corner they told him to drop the right hand. The left hook lands, but he needs to come back with the right hand. There's the right hand, Jim, I spoke earlier about. You must give Tyson angles. You can't remain stationary. Hands must stay up and stay out of the corners. But indeed, Tony acknowledged in talking with us, Ray, that you couldn't finesse Tyson completely. You have to be willing, as he said, to fight him. Well, you saw that, that double punch with one hand sort of a bolo type punch and those are the type of punches do a great deal of damage because the body shot then the uppercut raises the chin up and then the left hook comes into play good uppercut by Tubbs inside snap Tyson back a little Tubbs has to be very careful. You notice he put both feet together, and that's easy to be knocked down or knocked off balance. He's trying to use his additional weight. Coming up on a minute to go in round two. Tony Tubbs so far appears in no way intimidated by Tyson's fury, as have so many of his opponents. Good left hook. Good, good combination by Tubbs. Tubbs just trying to gain respect, and I think he's done that. Good left by Tyson. Tubbs real. Those hands must be kept up higher. And again, like I said earlier, Jim, I don't think it's a good idea to change punches with Tyson. Good body shot, but you need combinations now. 30 seconds left in the round. Both fighters have had their say here. I couldn't tell whether another punch hurt. Tubbs is hurt. Tubbs is hurt badly. It was a left hook. And it's over. Odell Hadley has jumped in the ring. The fight is over. With stunning swiftness. And the fans are enjoying it. They show their appreciation here.
Remarkable. The tide of this fight changed within 15 or 20 seconds. Well, that's, that's what a great puncher can do. The boxer is thinking all the time, and the puncher is punching all the time. Um, the only thing I can say now is that if you thought that uh, whale hunting was outlawed in Japan, we just saw that uh, Mike Tyson hadn't heard about it. And Ray Leonard, let's take a look back at the left hands which did the damage. Well, Tyson now starting to find his rank. That left hook there pretty much did, spoke for itself. It's self-explanatory because it was a short and powerful left hook that put Tony Tubbs down. And here Mike still showing that he is a good finisher. Tubbs had already been reeling a bit before that point as the result of a short right against the ropes. What was happening actually was that Tyson was wearing down Tubbs because Tubbs tried to stay inside and fight Mike Tyson's fight, which I thought was a mistake. Once again, that's short left hook. And uh, for those that say Mike is not really a one-punch knockouter, I think they need to look at some films again. Mike has enormous strength and great upper body uh, power. Early now in round two. That was the punch against the ropes that really started things off. I said a right, it was in fact a left right on the forehead. But if you can appreciate the power of Mike Tyson because that punch hit him on the temple and it wasn't really a six inch punch, it was shorter than that. So Tony Tubbs becomes the latest in the string of victims. Tyson's 30th knockout in 34 times in the ring. Bad, Mr. Hatton. And the Japanese, who were so disappointed 15 years ago by George Foreman's one-round knockout of Joe Roman, got about two and a half minutes more this time. But Jimmy also has to cool, uh, commend the corner of Tony Tubbs because they was in there for the welfare of his safety because they saw the power of Mike Tyson. They saw that the man was hurt and was indeed down. Interestingly, Ray, one of the things that Tubbs had seemed to demonstrate throughout his 26 fight career up to that point was a pretty good chin. Well, he has a very good durable chin, but again, that's Mike Tyson there. And right now, let's go up to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official statistics on this one. Ladies and gentlemen, here's the official time. Two minutes, 54 seconds of the second round. The winner by knockout victory. Now 34 consecutive victories. Still the undefeated, undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, Iron Mike Tyson. Well, Ray Leonard, uh, Tony Tubbs himself, as it turns out, said it best in a press conference a few days ago when, in sarcasm, he said to the audience, I'm the tune-up, the big fight is in June. As it turns out, he was exactly right. He was the tune-up, the big fight is in June. What did Michael Spink see today that he will have to worry about on June 27th? Well, I'm sure that Michael Spink saw the power of Mike Tyson and that Mike Tyson is indeed getting better and better, more patient and more destructive as in a sense. And right now, that young man is with Larry Merchant, so let's go straight up to the ring. All right, Mike Tyson, it seemed that Tony Tubbs went right at you and tested you, and you were a little bit too strong for him, but he was effective until you hurt him. Well, he was effective because I planned it that way. I was looking for the opening, because I planned for him to run, and then when I saw he, he came such a easy target to hit, I was just planning and planning. And he had his hands up very high, and I was surprised that he had his hands up so high. And so I started hitting to the body and bringing it up in the middle. And then as soon as he brought his hands, I saw his eyes and I aimed right for his eyes. He said that nobody had ever gone to your body before and he wanted to try you there. He did hit, hit you a few b blows there. Did he hurt you at all? Not Distract at all. you even? Not at all. My, my mission is to go and destroy and not to let anything get involved. If you get punched, you get hurt. I refuse to be hurt, knocked down, and knocked out. I can't lose. I refuse to lose. What was your response to the audience here, which is kind of quiet compared to the crowds in America? Did you I, hear anything or not, not at all? Anything? Not at all. I knew there were people scratching me when I was coming through, but I had such an intense tunnel vision. I just my, my objective was just to get in and get my hands on my opponent. 
when he didn't come out moving and jabbing and doing those kind of things, what was your first thought about well, that? Well, I said, well, this is going to be a complicated fight. It's going to be a fight. He came to fight. And, you know, and I was, I, for the last moment, I prepared for him to just come out swinging because Kevin said he's going to come out and try to rough you. Did he at all try to rough you up? Absolutely. I, I, felt, I felt the tip of his um, glove around my eye. I don't know if it was the thumb, but in fighting, you're in a hurt business. You can't complain. And he was there to complain. Is it just a question, do you feel, that no matter what anybody's plan is, that your power will negate any plan? Our plan is better. <laughs> Our plan is, we just, the objective is to win. We don't fight by book techno technology or anything. We come to fight the authentic way. When you see a man come out and he's obviously that out of shape and heavy, does that lull you in any way in the first round? Not at all, not at all. That was his prerogative to come out the way he did. My job is to finish him off. You see, someone if he would have went 10 rounds, 6 rounds, 7 rounds, then someone could say something critical towards my performance. But he came out, he came in, he, was a, he came out a tough performance. He didn't come like a guy that just came to pick up a payday. He got hit with a solid shot. It looked like it was above the eye, but I tried hitting exactly in the eye. And he took a, a great shot and he went down. But if he, if he were the last 6 or 7 rounds and he was out of shape, then you could criticize me. But he came to fight. And if anybody could criticize that he was out of shape, I did what's supposed to have been done to a person that was out of shape. I got rid of him quick. This is your first fight as a newlywed. Were you thinking about that at all? Did you want to put on a special performance in any way? Not at all, because when I'm in the ring, I'm objective, tunnel vision, and it's just this is my world in here. I have to ask you one last question, Mike, in an article in Sports Illustrated that's on the stands now back in the States. It was said that sometimes after a fight, because you have so much adulation now and everybody's around you, you feel you have to go back, put a mask on, beg for quarters, go no. back to your old neighborhood. No. Is that true? No, I don't do that. I said me and my friend did it want, do it once and all for a joke. Because he makes a joke, cause, you know, you always say, people always say, Mike Tyson, you have a lot of money, you do this and that. So one day me and my friend Rory just go, we put on mags and baggy clothes and bunny clothes, and we was on the street begging for money. Just as a personal joke for myself. So we won't have to throw any charity for you. No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Mike Tyson. And now back to ringside with Jim. All right, Larry, thank you very much. And one brief personal note, you saw behind Mike's shoulder there his co-manager, Bill Caton. For the first time since Mike's been fighting as a professional, the other co-manager, Jim Jacobs, has not been able to make this trip. He's back in a hospital room in New York recovering from an illness, and we would all like to offer our personal best wishes to Jim and wish him a speedy recovery and look forward to seeing him in Atlantic City on June 27. Ray? We heard the essence of Mike Tyson's ring intelligence there. This is a fight. You make no excuses. You come to destroy your opponent. Right now, we'll look back at round two, and you tell us exactly how he did it. Well, there's no question about it, Jim, but Mike Tyson is always on a mission when he's in the ring. And I think it's tough, difficult, rather, for fighters to deal with him because he doesn't have a feeling out process. In other words, he doesn't see whether or not he can land a jab or right hand. He goes right at you, and he goes in there for the kill. And we're going to take a look back now at the entire second round, Ray, from the handheld camera angle, which will give you a feel of what it looked like to us from ringside. Remember that Larry Merchant himself commented that he thought Tubbs fought a very effective first round and, in fact, scored the first round for Tubbs. I thought it was pretty close to even, but certainly I thought Tubbs had given an impressive account of himself in round one. The first round, that's the way you fight Mike Tyson or compete with Mike Tyson, brother, because you have to give him angles, jab. You see the jab, how effective it is, movement, never stationary target, because what happens here, when you become stationary, Mike Tyson works your body, he brings your hands down, and then he goes for the kill. I thought the first round was a pretty good round for Tubbs, although I would have preferred to see a lot more movement, a lot more left jabs thrown. Do you think that fatigue was becoming a factor this early in the fight for Tony? That's rather premature to say because uh, normally body shots wear you down in the later rounds. But then they're always an exception to the rule because Mike Tyson's body attack is so devastating. Here he's going right to the midsection and uh, I'm sure Tubbs felt those shots. Tubbs again made the mistake of trying to exchange punch for punch with Mike Tyson. But in doing so, he took away what got him to, to the championship. That's the jab, the movement, and his boxing style. There you saw Tubbs doing as he claimed he would try to do, delivering body shots to Tyson. But what you have to understand, Jim, inside, Mike Tyson has 
the greater upper body strength. And um, he has the shorter punches. He throws more combinations inside, and they're short because his hands are very fast, too, for a heavyweight. There was a good short left inside by Tubbs. But you also see the power of Mike Tyson because always after Tubbs delivers his combination, Tyson retaliates. And indeed, that's the problem of bringing the strategy that Tony said he would bring. You've got to fight with Mike Tyson, but then you give him a chance to do his thing. Look at the short shots that Mike hits his opponent with. Good short left hooks to the head, right hooks to the head, and then he delivers that, that crunch and body shots. Not a lot of movement from Tubbs, although Tubbs now is trying to get some respect from Mike Tyson. I love that combination there with the same part, same hand. The right to the body and an uppercut, right uppercut. Here, I see that uh, Tubbs is wobbly. He's ready to go here. So he, Tubbs winds up as a, um, a bug, a fat bug on the windshield of Mike Tyson's career. And indeed, Larry, uh, as time goes on, we are likely to have opportunity after opportunity to continue to place Tyson in historical perspective and into proper perspective in the modern boxing scene. Your thoughts on what you saw him do with Tony Tubbs today? Well, I think it just uh, basically it confirms the fact that uh, while he may not yet be classified as a great heavyweight champion, that he's certainly the most precocious young heavyweight that there ever was in boxing. He's still younger than any other person has ever become the heavyweight champion, and yet he's not yet uh, 22 years old. Um, I imagine he's going to be awfully good for the uh, balance of payments in America as he, uh, <coughs> excuse me, travels around the world because people around the world uh, do want to see this American phenomenon. And, of course, all of that, Larry, presumes that he can get by Michael Spinks on June 27. Did you see anything here which alters your perspective on the Spinks bout? Well, well the only thing I've seen here that uh, would affect the Spinks fight would be that Michael Spinks knows, if he have ever had any idea of staying inside with this guy, that he's got to just stay away from him and hope to uh, uh, frustrate him and make him a little wild and crazy and tentative. Uh, and then jump in as uh, he has wont to do. I have great respect for Michael Spinks as a fighter, but against somebody who is as young and strong and especially as fast with his hands, with his feet, and even with his mind. He adjusts with his mind. Not many 21-year-old fighters can do that. Um, I don't see any, any hope for uh, Michael Spinks or anybody else out there that we know of at, uh, at this point. That's a pretty strong statement. Uh, Larry has just said that he sees no hope for Michael Spinks, who is an undefeated fighter uh, who once held a legitimate heavyweight championship of the world in the eyes of one of the three governing bodies, who is still seen by some as a people's champion because he twice defeated Larry Holmes. Uh, where do you stand on the Spinks versus Tyson question at this moment, Ray? Well, I think that Michael Spinks will have to be innovative in order to defeat Mike Tyson. Naturally, watching his performance tonight uh, reassures him that it's not a good idea to stand inside with Mike Tyson. Michael Spinks, his style is so unorthodox, and his movement will pretty much help him out a great deal because if he selects to stay inside, Jim, he's asking for problems because Michael Spinks is indeed a very intelligent boxer. All right, just to sum up, and uh, with thanks to Ray and Larry, what you have seen today was 21 and a half year old heavyweight champion Mike Tyson earning about nine or ten million dollars for just under six minutes worth of work in the ring. The product of the continuing.